and we're both recently retired. No wood. No wood, no black tank, um, no, no generator, propane. no propane. Heaters in here. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, oh, that's cool. Wow, filled you're with, right. You know, we're going to be on the road for two it's months. It's huge, right? So it's filled. How stealth this van is. The amount of garage storage back here, which is typically yeah. under a bed, is actually but vertical. It's because of how little power the van uses. Wow, we're sitting in a really different rig, and we got two really special people to tell us about their van they're currently traveling in. You are? I'm Guy. And you are? Roseanne. Guy and Roseanne, thank you for sharing uh, your, your van with us. You're currently traveling in it. So this is not a like an RV, I don't know, dealer walkthrough. This is actual people traveling in their van. There's some features of this van we want to point out. The seating converts into a bed. The galley is very different. The bathroom, wait till we can't do a van tour without a bathroom talk. Um, and this is an embassy RV. If you're not familiar with embassy RV, kind of their claims to fame is no wood. No wood, no black tank, um, no okay. generator, no propane. Um, None of the things that usually go wrong. No solar. <laughs> no solar. <laughs> no awning. <laughs> no awning. So again, just thank you so much for your time today. And uh, again, just give us a little introduction to yourselves and, and then we'll show around the van. So we are Guy and Roseanne from Hasbro Heights, New Jersey, which is in Bergen County, um, traveling in our embassy RV. And, and this is Amore, uh, our, our van. Uh, Amore, as you know, is the Italian word for love and it's a bit of a takeoff on our last name. And we're both recently retired. Uh, uh, early last year, I, I'm a retired attorney, and, and Roseanne spent 35 years as a nurse. Wow, you guys are pretty tough, attorney and nurse. <laughs> yeah. You've had your van for, what, about a year? Almost. Almost a year. So let's have you point out a few things. I'm going to kind of stand up. So tell us about the bed system, and how does this work? Do you sleep as twins, or how does this work? Yeah, twins. So we, we typically sleep as twins. Um, the, the beds... Uh, I, I've modified this bed a little bit because uh, it comes 24 inches wide and I'm a little bit of a bigger guy and 24 inches isn't uh, quite wide enough for me. So, so we had a three inch additional cushion made that we just keep there to keep the, the bed a little bit further away from the wall. Um, and that makes it uh, perfectly comfortable for me and, and Roseanne will pull her bed out from the wall a little bit at nighttime. Um, they're powered, the beds. Oh, okay. And and um, powered meaning you just hit a switch just, and they just come together. Just a switch together. on a control panel up okay. front that that would power them together. Sure. Um, sometimes we bring them all the way together, um, but most nights we uh, we sleep in them as twins. The uh, the bed has an extender on the on the passenger side. Um, it's kind of a nested box that's right under right. your feet there, yeah. and you you pull that oh, out okay. and. And slide it over and and put the additional cushion this cushion here so where I'm, uh, my foot is, is this comes out so you can make this entire surface a single bed so that's right yeah. and wow, that's cool. and um, everybody has a different approach to to bedding we leave our our beds made um, uh, with just this cover on it uh, and that way at night all we got to do is put the pillows on and, and so one of the things about um, embassy is you know, no wood, you talked about that. So maybe just tell us about this cabinetry and how how functional is it versus a traditional yeah. RV? So um, the the cabinets are, you know, positive latching, uh, like you see in a lot of yeah. RVs, so yeah. that nothing comes flying out uh, on the road. Um, everything in an embassy is, uh, is marine plastic or marine vinyl. You know, one of the claims to fame, distinguishing features of embassy, of course, is there's no wood. Um, and uh, and anybody who's followed uh, Scott's channel knows uh, from interviews with <laughs> with Terry Minix that the reason for that is that uh, uh, wood can absorb moisture and therefore odors and mildew and mold and all that stuff and and this does none of that um, and we're we're hopeful and we know from other owners that it'll look just this way years from now because it can't warp uh, it can't mold screws uh, don't fall uh, out. No, it's very, it's <laughs> very good, and, and there's a lot of storage. Um, um, these are all these three are pass through. This one because it's locking is not pass mm. through, so we can put like a, we have our the family jewels. We have stuff in there that's a value. <laughs> let's let's put it that way. Uh, and uh, and same thing over here. Um, and you know we've uh, Roseanne uh, um, found these. You know, why don't you describe those? Oh, these are great um, yeah. over the door cabinets or over the door hangers that um, at night we charge our phone, it plugs right in here, and it, the phone fits right in this case, and they're adjustable. 
and, oh, and yeah. make it lower if you'd like. You know, That's super cool, things right? that you need readily available, your medication, things that you need right in the morning. And you found these where? I found them in the Christmas tree in that store, which are only in the east. <laughs> so some people, you can get them online. You can get them on, and Amazon. on Amazon. Amazon. But um, yeah, and you just have to search. One of the nice things is that uh, Embassy puts in a, a couple of 12 volt USBs, so those don't require the inverter. So at night, if you just want to charge your phone or, or your watch or what have you, you don't need the inverter. Right. You, you can plug right in here, and then we just drop the phone in the in the cup. And so 110 here does require the inverter, yes. and that's what converts this to um, so it inverts converts whatever. <clears throat> excuse me, from uh, direct current to alternating current. So this mm -hmm. is what this runs, and that's what you're talking about there. Um, so you have a, 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 a movie player, DVD player? That's a Blu-ray, which, Blu which honestly we've never used, never used uh, yeah. because in, nowadays which, you which, download everything, Which right? means there's a TV somewhere, but right. where yeah, is there it? There it is. Oh! <laughs> so that is. comes right out of the wall. and uh, So you kind of pull uh, this down. Pull and that it's, down. It's and really a huge up. TV, right? Uh, it's 32 inches, and it's a, it's a great television. And, movie um, night in bed. There's, <laughs> a, um, there's a digital antenna for, for over-the-air signals if you happen to be near a, a city. Um, uh, but on other times, we just stream from our tablets, and, you know, stuff that we've yeah. downloaded along the way. That makes sense. What is this gadget here? This gauge? Oh, that's the heat, right? Yep. That's, hold on, I have that. This is the um, thermostat. So that's for the L-Well. And that allows us to, to regulate the temperature of the heat and, uh, yeah. and to turn on the hot water. The, the air conditioning is, is separate. controls are separate. Okay, and then this... Uh, heater runs off chassis fuel. Is that right? That's right. So, so no what, propane. So so no propane. Uh, uh, so next to you, uh, under that portion of the this thing here. Again, oh right? yeah, that's right. Uh, back <clears throat> under there um, is the uh, the unit that that heats the uh, the the coolant or the glycol, I guess it is, and um, uh, it's tankless, and and the the heated glycol then circulates to to a, two places under. The sink cabinet. Uh, there's the blower, so if you need heat, it's it's blowing the hot air, and it's also a uh, on-demand water heater. Water heater. Um, now, are these heater vents here we're looking at? Uh, no, these. This is the air conditioning. Air so, conditioning. So, uh, so heat comes out. Uh, they, heat uh, the heat out comes out under, out under this oh, blower here. All right. right. All right. Yeah. Um, so uh, under this vent, and then the heat. Heaters in here. Oh, I got gotcha. you. Uh, that. Oh, that's cool. So that's both the heater and the on-demand water heater. Right here. Um, and and but the 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 glycol comes from under under the uh, sofa there. Now that uh, these are air conditioning vents, and this is again a fairly unique feature. You keep talking air conditioning. I'm like, where in the hell is it? Uh, <laughs> so normally right. it's so tell us what that is. That's yeah. super interesting. So, so you know, most of the time in a B van. Your air conditioning is in the roof, yep. uh, um, and they they work fine. Uh, they they do what they're supposed to do. They cool the van, but if you've ever slept under any one of the one of those, you know that it's all, like sleeping under an airport. Uh, sometimes it can be quite noisy. Um, uh, Embassy uses a, a split system air conditioning. So to your left, Scott, uh, on, on the passenger side sofa, under here, mm -hmm. right, um, is the uh, like in the box. Yeah. Here, right? Is the, the heat exchange portion of the split system. The compressor is under the van behind the axle and protected by the axle. And then, uh, to make it even better, the air conditioning system is ducted. Um, so, uh, so. And that's the, what we're looking at yeah, here. So the them. ducts uh, uh, come up the wall and, and, and the vent here and here and in two spots above oh, sure. uh, the refrigerator. The result being that it's very quiet. Um, uh, it, you know, it, there's the usual noise, noise outside from the compressor, but, but inside, um, particularly if you have it on low, which is usually enough, um, it's, it's really quite quiet. Quite cool. Yeah, again, Embassy just really approaches this very differently. Having ducted cooling and in a B van is really, really very unusual. Um, so tell us about the Gala again. So, kind of a different approach. Uh, the thing that always gets me is that, what is this we're looking at? Because it's it's hard to see on the camera, maybe, but this it's sunken it's, countertop. So what it's is a little this? bit, um, you know, what's it? It's Corian. Corian, and it's um, you know, nice beveled edge here, and evenly across. 
um, there's nice space here to put your teapot or the induction cooktop that comes with the van. Uh, fits perfect here, plugs in right here. Um, this is the nice cover you can use as a chopping board or you know, counter as a space, hot, kind of yeah, as a yeah. hot, pot, hot yeah. pot or counter space. And this lifts up oh, nicely. Yeah. And it's a nice size sink, honestly. Um, stainless steel. We have our you know collapsible sink which is one of our favorite, oh, yeah. one of our 10 favorite things nice so That's cool. um and it's very nice and there's a lot a lot of space to wash whatever you need to wash and then a microwave above you and the microwave above you is this standard or is this um, convection it might be standard, standard just a standard okay. but it's very powerful yeah um you know it really heats things up relatively quickly and it's filled with some stuff and then roseanne right in the front of you there clearly a fridge and freezer we have the Big. Vitro Frigo. Vitro Frigo. And is that uh, uh, Italian for refrigerator? I, I probably. <laughs> <laughs> No. But it's very big, very big. The freezer is, I feel, very large. Um, it's packed with a lot of food. A lot of food. And the free, the refrigerator is very large too. That's fine. Um, if you want, yeah. <laughs> What's in fridge number one? Fridge number one. Wow, filled you're with, right. You know, we're going to be on the road for. Two it's months, huge, right? So it's filled, but it's got a lot of space. A lot of class lot B of space. people have uh, fridge envy. Uh, yeah, it's yeah. pretty funny. It's it's it fits a lot. It fits it a, lot. a lot. And then above you is storage with some <laughs> springy nut stuff. This is All our the bulky storage, items, right? So um, uh, very happy to have this because this is where we kind of store a lot of um, food items that don't fit in the cabinet. Right. And our pots and our pans are here. Okay. Our frying pans for the induction. And you alluded to this is kind of the pantry? The pantry, yes. All right. Um, yeah, you're, yeah. Not, you're fine. Yeah. You're fine. Pantry. Oh, wow, look and at so that. This, Tons of this space. is a t high one, so you, we put our teapot in the And the drawers tall. pull out? Is and they're oh, yeah. very nice. Well, let me guess. They're soft clothes? Soft clothes. Look at that. Nice very job. Nice. Yeah, that's cool. Very nice. Mm -hmm. Which and is, again, kind of unusual for a B van. That's, yeah, yeah. yeah. And so, and there's more storage down here, so... And you'll see that this is the air conditioning tubing. So um, oh, yeah. we have our um, camping pots under there. Sure. And there's storage all the way under here, wow, too. Wow, that's so great. So. Well, thank you for the galley tour. That kind of leads us to what's behind door number one. <laughs> 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 do you want to do the bathroom tour, sure. Roseanne? Okay, so, let's. All right, Roseanne is standing in arguably the most talked about room in any <laughs> RV, vans in particular. What is this we're looking at? This is our. Toilet area, bathroom area, bathroom. shower area. Um, we have well, a lovely vanity mirror. So vanity, and this uh, is illuminated. It is bath light. Look at that, and then it tilts. I see a big. It hinge does. Here. It does tilt. It tilts, yeah. which is pretty which cool, is nice. right? Nice, and it comes towards you too. Yeah. You oh, know. okay, that's but, cool. Yeah, but it's very big. Wow. Um, I don't think I've seen a mirror big. that size in a. Anyway, Man, mine, not even in my house. My, I, don't I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> so sink is so, here. You use this sink we for use, for dishes dish and, and bathroom, wash hands, hands and yeah. We and also use water and wipes. After uh, so then, where in the heck is the toilet? The toilet is under this. Carefully cover. hidden. Very good. Um, and, and what have, kind of toilet are we looking at here? We have the labio. And the labio which, is kind of like a. Like a diaper genie. Diaper genie on steroids. <laughs> on steroids. So yeah. You do the thing, you push a button, it kind of vacuums it up and drops And then drops sucks a, it down. Sucks it down. Yeah. And so. then it's clean. There's no odor. We've had this, sometimes we've had it, you know, almost full and there's no odor. It's, you so really no don't odor, have any odor from no it at all. No black tank. No black tank. No flush, no, really. Nothing. It's a waterless, dry flush. That is yeah. really cool. And you just, at the end, when it's full, you just lift it up and throw it in the garbage. That is so great. Which is nice. You mentioned shower. Um, how does that work? Because I'm not seeing a shower. The shower. Again, thanks for sharing your van. I know you guys are. Oh, look at this. Here's our shower. Sure. It pulls out. <laughs> And then this whole room becomes a shower? It becomes a shower, the doors close, and we have this. Oh, you have pocket doors. Pocket doors. Okay. And then we have the shower curtain. Oh, sure. That wraps around all the way. And okay. And goes actually angled behind this cover. Okay. So it really does cover the whole bathroom area. And you put this, you know, and obviously you cover the toilet. Okay. Too. So there must be a drain under the mat here you have. And then the drain. Here. There you go. So wow, there that's a go. pretty good size shower. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's a lot, all, of, room. All a lot of room. All things considered. And everything stays dry because we have shower. Sure. Yeah. yeah. You're doing pretty dry. good holding two uh, devices there. <laughs> <laughs> so 
That's pretty awesome. Well, you know. That is great. So, yeah. All right. Well, thanks for sharing. That. There's more storage here, but you got a lot of stuff hanging. Um, uh, easy to open. Okay. Um, these are the same company as the other baskets, but Let me this see is our. Can, can you get around? Peaks. You can squeeze yep. in. There this go. is our uh, linen so again, closet. Drawers it's again. called, and so the same um, soft open clo drawers. Okay. And then down below, we still have some storage. Yeah. Um, it's really pretty. Mix music. Yeah. Should I move your microphone up? Oh. Yeah. Um, so yeah, we have a lot of storage still. Pretty amazing. Thank you, Roseanne, <laughs> for the bathroom and galley tour. Let's jump outside, and we'll show you some things outside, including the, the garage storage. What's special about Embassy RV and their next travel destination? And some advice for you. Here we go outside. These are our bug wall screens. Bug that, wall uh, screens. Uh, we installed ourselves. It's a great American company in North Carolina called Bug Wall, but they will do the installation for you. And my advice is don't be like us. Go there and get the install. <laughs> There's a tip. Save some time. Let the, let the pros do it. <laughs> this is one of the great things about Embassy is they have this bar, which is a seat rest and a grab handle. Uh, unlike my van floor plan which has a seat kind of here you don't have this grab handle so it's really inconvenient and you you don't the cushion kind of moves around and so good job on our embassy rv oh it's nice out here and if uh, yeah, yeah while cool. we're standing here we wait, talked about the split wait, wait. system if you'd like to see yeah it, right why don't you come on out well, oh. there's a secret stuff in oh. there Oh, yeah, there's it's some a secret bit of stash. Storage space as well. Oh, <laughs> all right. So there's well, we every, that, every you, inch you matters. You can see the heat exchange portion of the uh, split system. Again, the compressor is under the van, and then and then back behind it over here are the 920 amp hour master volt batteries. Master volt lithium batteries. So awesome. I think one of the first things we want to talk about, Guy and Roseanne, is how stealth this van is compared to I don't know, up the Travato left. But you look at the embassy RVs here at our campout event, and there's just so few of the obvious things. Awnings, solar panels, AC on top, no cutouts. So again, kind of like coming around the van, it's just kind of a transit looking van. And wait till you see this coming around on this side. A little dirty because of the bugs here. Yeah, no worries. <laughs> again, there's just, there's no cutouts. It's got the air vents up here. That's the only really thing. And then the electrical for the, um, Power in, and that's pretty. This is really about the only thing that te would tell anyone, uh, a casual observer, that this is an RV. Right. Um, uh, the, because the rest of the van, there's there's no holes, no cutouts, no punch outs. Uh, we've been to um, sometimes to like municipal parking areas and so forth, where it's, where it'll say, you know, no RVs, and we just pull in in our van. Because uh, you're in a van. Because uh, because we're just a van. We're, uh, um, and uh, I guess the only other thing that you know, there's the the exhaust for the heat. Oh yeah, what is comes that out there? That's the exhaust for the for the Elwell heater that we saw uh, inside that yep. runs off chassis fuel. So. Yep. And um, you, you may you may notice that uh, Embassy normally puts a running board on both sides. So we opted to to delete the driver side running board, just having entirely to do with the shape of our driveway. Um, mm. um, but we're able to get in and out of the driver's door without the without the running board just fine and it does allow us to have this exhaust pipe a little higher off the ground than it otherwise would be so not burning grass i'm very short and i don't have any trouble getting in the front because ah, i am point. the driver Ooh, <laughs> nice what's what's your dirty dirty uh, dirty what's your dirty duty sir what is your, what is your, she's driving what are you doing i'm doing the navigating that, and trip planning while she's driving and so that's, figuring out where we're going next and you know where's the next pit stop where's the next rest area where's the next campground which is a big job so <laughs> that's what it is so this is super fascinating to me um the amount of garage storage back here which is typically yeah. under a bed is actually Wait, vertical you can open this if you'd like to get a little better view maybe and it's just this is probably what about 18 20 it inches something in here deep so it doesn't want to stay and yeah it's uh, about 18 in the middle and then it tapers a little bit to the sides yeah um i guess my first question is is folks like to know where the water goes because there was no cutout so right. the water is filled from right inside the door that's right um, if you recall when we were back in the bathroom there was that uh, the mirror and just below the mirror is the gravity fill there is also a city water connection for anybody who might prefer to, to hook up and stay okay. hooked up to water and you that's that's that right here there. on the back wall yeah. um, 
Uh, we don't typically hook up to city water. We, we prefer to f just fill the tank and, and run off of our water pump. Um, but that is available for anybody who might prefer it. So tell us about some of your mods here, yeah. guy, because it's yeah. it's I just can't get over the amount of garage storage. That's kind of a vertical space, so how do you take advantage well, of that? Well, that's right. So um, so some of these uh, fasteners that you see here, these horizontal bars, that's standard from Embassy, right? Um, we installed those L-Tracks, uh, and, and also that thing on the top is called an E-Track that the hook is hanging out of. And my motivation for that was that the one of the selling points of the Ford Transit is is uh, it's got a high ceiling, and that's a lot of cubic feet of storage that's up there. We wanted to be able to get stuff up off the ground um, and leave the floor for other things. So our tables, our camp table, our camp chairs, our camp rug, our you know our Which seat here, all mat, that stuff right there. He's talking uh, about all goes right here. Can all hang up there, and that leaves this floor space for for you know my cooler full of beer and um, <laughs> very important stuff uh, libation live <laughs> and same thing here uh, uh, all of these are are items that that we added to be able to hang things keep stuff off the ground and that and that gives us all this floor space for for other items we can pack really quite a Huge bit of amounts. gear down here and you can take advantage of the, the door yeah yeah panels. we in, in stored, installed these uh gladiator gear track they're called there are two or three different brands of basically the same thing these tracks that ha uh, hold hooks well, marshmallows, for my marshmallows. <laughs> you have to roast the marshmallows around the campfire that's what that's for uh th this is van made gear um w we have it for the rear and for the front now embassy now sells their own but when we got our van uh, embassy was not offering insulated covers and do you love these or what we do yeah. um, we never uh, take them down yeah. you yeah. don't need to take yeah. them yeah. down so, the one yeah. in the, the the way you know you're working uh, they're working is when we take the one out of the windshield on a sunny day the this outside side of it is almost too t hot to touch mm. and that's all heat that would be in your van if you weren't blocking it some way and the, as, as i know scott knows and has said many times on his channel the cab is your enemy when, when it comes to keeping the yeah, van cool because it's like and, a greenhouse and, and right? you want to do everything possible to block that heat coming in the windows it's just so great to see other, how other people roll in their rigs um, now you folks are not full-time no no just take long trips. long trips yeah our last trip though was four months so um We've had the, the van since August, and we've probably spent about 60-plus percent of the time since then on the road. On the road. So that's yeah. pretty, that's quite a bit. And I'm just, yeah. again, it's always fun to see how other people travel in their vans with stuff. And what, how do you deal with the stuff? And it's, it's, it's a compromise in a B-van, right? On what comes, what goes. For um, sure. So it's, uh, it's, it's really interesting. We're gonna step out over there and then um, ask a few questions. You know, why a van, why Embassy RV? Your best feature of Embassy RV? Give uh, you some advice and then where's your next trip? But I have to give these guys a huge shout out for two reasons. Number one, they have a YouTube channel. We're gonna talk about that in just a second. What's the name of it? Amore Van. Amore Van. You guys love this love thing. I love it. <laughs> Well, hey, you kind of have to love each other right. if you're spending four months in a van together. So. Yes, ma'am. Um, and the other shout out is these are the folks that introduced me to the Otzi Grill about a, over a year ago now, right? And if, we've done a couple of videos on that. Yes. We would uh, show you, but it's behind It's behind there, stuff. but the whole thing is one inch thin, which is the whole point. Yeah. And so just a huge shout out. Yeah. It's a great product. It's a great product. And that's kind of what, you know, van people do, RVers in general, is just uh, share things learn is that something i want or not and i was in a place to get rid of my big old char grill or char bro grill and these guys solved the problem i didn't i knew i had but i didn't know the solution so just a yeah. huge shout out um, all right let's go around the other side <laughs> okay and why a van well because when we were talking about having an rv i needed something that i could drive and be able to park and get into a space so the van is the perfect size and it's very comfortable and i can drive it so <laughs> And, and a, lo a lot of you know, your RV choice has to do with how you intend to travel. And so um, we're much more the kind of people that we want to go somewhere for two or three days, maybe three or four days, and move on to the next place. Um, and if you're only going to stay for two or three days, you don't want to roll in with a fifth wheel, right? And, right. and have to do all that set up only uh, to leave. We like to go from place to place. It's a, it's a vehicle meant for really as much for the journey as the destination. And, and it, uh, it, it's, a, it's a great way to get around. We can park anywhere, as Roseanne said. And why Embassy RV? Well, uh, 
what attracted me to embassy, I had been researching class B RVs for, for a long time. Uh, we found Embassy as a result, really, of, of your webpage, Scott, uh, and then from your webpage, we found the Embassy Owners and Wannabes Facebook group. We found uh, Robert Hume's Roads of Life uh, channel, um, and, and and as we were researching Class Bs, there was always something, some box that wasn't checked. When we found Embassy, and it, no generator, no wood, no black tank, no propane. Uh, uh, you know, uh, Terry Minix, who who is the you know the brains uh, of the outfit at Embassy, the 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 person behind the, its innovative design, it, it was clear to me right away that that he had given a lot of thought to eliminating all the things that usually go wrong. Um, um, uh, it it the it's simultaneously very innovative, but uh, and very simple. Part of the innovation is its simplicity. But not just because of the design, but because of the people at Embassy. Mm -hmm. you know, all you can really ask for from a company is that they stand behind their product. And the best feature of the Embassy RV is? Wow. Uh, the, 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 the single best feature. Um, <sighs> I, I don't you know. know. I, 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 I've got to say uh, it, it's, it's, um, it's its reliability. Um, it's the, the overall package that gives you a great deal of confidence that everything's going to work and that if, it, if something doesn't work, uh, the company's going to make it right. Mm -hmm. um, uh, so it's hard to put your finger on, one, on just one feature. It, it's the whole package, but certainly, you know, uh, we're really happy not to have a blank tank, black tank to, yeah. to dump. And um, I think the ease uh, of using uh, it, yeah. you know, once you've learned the system, yeah. You've learned the system. The there's simplicity. not anything new to learn. Um, like I said, the mo there's not extra motors, so you're not stuck someplace because the awning did close. And so I think the ease of use. And, you know, you have to give a shout out to the lithium system. Um, and I, I think one of the things that a lot of people, when they shop for uh, uh, RVs and vans, mistake that they make is you look at the lithium system, which is now fairly common. And people tend to get into this numbers game, how many amp hours, how many watt hours, and, and that's important for sure. But where Embassy really shines is the other half of the equation, which is it's not just how many amp hours you have, but how fast are you burning them. And, and every design choice they make, every appliance, every piece of insulation is designed to use energy more slowly. We were in, um, in uh, <coughs> Big Bend State and National Park. 12 days, no hookups, um, only a little bit of driving to charge from the alternator because we were just going from nearby campground to nearby uh, campground. We didn't need the air conditioning at night because it was cool. And after 12 days of no hookups, we were still at 25%. Wow, uh, that's... And, and, and that's not because of the size of the battery pack, which is large. It's because of how little power the van uses. And how about... a tip or two advice for people that are um, shopping for vans um you guys did a lot of research so uh, what, years what, what years uh, <laughs> so how, how would you shorten that uh, what advice would you give well <clears throat> first you have to ask yourself what do you intend to do with your vehicle because until you until you can answer the question where do you want to go what do you want to see um, you can't really choose but w once you know that um, we, we have this l wonderful uh, luxury of, of uh, YouTube channels out there, Scott's YouTube channel. There are YouTube channels, of course, that are devoted to, you know, Scott's got a Travato uh, and, and yet provides a lot of information on, on Embassy. And there are other channels out there by experienced RVers with almost every model. And, and spend some time, uh, spend some time looking for those, those YouTube channels. Um, uh, people who actually own the RV and can talk about it, and you'll find one uh, that that appeals to you. And, and uh, um, yeah, that's how we did it. We, we just uh, absorbed all the information we could find online, and 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 we had our, as I say, eureka moment when we found the one that checked all our boxes. And go to the meetups. That's a, an excellent way. Whatever meetup, whatever van you're looking for, to go to the meetups because that's how you'll see the different designs and. You'll get the feel for what you want, and you might come home with an embassy someday. And the final question is, where is your next destination? So we're currently in Elkhart, Indiana, 
RV capital of the world. Where, where are y'all headed next? Where are we headed next, honey? <laughs> Navigator. <laughs> um, we're headed from here to the upper peninsula of Michigan to Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, uh, which a few years ago uh, won a, a, a contest as the most beautiful place in America. So, so uh, we're really looking forward to seeing if it, if that award is justified. But it's on the shores of Lake Michigan. And it's supposed to be beautiful, and, and that's where we're headed. Well, Guy and, and Roseanne, just a huge thanks again for sharing your van and letting us see a van that's being traveled in. It's so, so important. People get to see that mm -hmm. and, and identify, can I do that or not? Or what would I do differently? Uh, it's just so important for people to see how people travel in their vans. So again, just thank you for sharing your time and your passion and being great embassy friends. It's just, uh, that's part of the cool thing about vans, right? Absolutely. You just make, Absolutely. you mentioned you, it. The, you do it, make a lot of new friends, which is, which is a lot of fun. I think I make exchange numbers and all yeah, of a sudden you've got yeah. two you of you go haul off together. I know, right? Yeah, it's, nice. <laughs> it's just the greatest thing. So again, just a huge thank you and thank you for watching. Um, YouTube channel again for you guys is? Our, our YouTube channel is Amore Van, and uh, and it's dedicated really to just following uh, our van, the things, the modifications we've made to it, um, and the places we go in it, and, and the adventures we have in it. And, and so a, a lot of that was just our effort to do for the next person what people like Scott did for us by, by providing information that hopefully is helpful to you in, in making your decision or even just helpful to you in finding fun places to go. <laughs> totally. Well said, sir. Um, so thank you again. Thanks for watching. Thumb up for us and subscribe to their channel. And until we see you soon, we like to say journey on. And sometimes that's to get your journey on. And uh, peace be with you. Journey on. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks everybody. for having us. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs>